Hi friends, uh, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Today my post is about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, also popularly known as SIBO. This has been in the news and also uh, it's an evolving field within gastroenterology. Normally, when we are born as infants, uh, our gut is entirely sterile. But the minute we come out of the womb, bacteria start populating the GI tract. It's a little known fact that we have approximately a trillion human cells, but we have about a hundred trillion bacteria in us and on us. So therefore, bacteria live with us, and it's only a problem when this balance gets disturbed. The small bowel is divided into duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. The small bowel sits in between the stomach and the colon, and is a long tubular structure that's really packed tightly. The colon, as opposed to the small bowel, has literally trillions of bacteria in it. In small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, certain bacteria start growing in the small bowel and can cause problems. These bacteria can be bacteria with names such as Streptococcus, E. coli, Micrococcus, and Klebsiella. In fact, the colonic gut bacteria serves certain functions. These functions include producing a substance called short-chain fatty acids. These short-chain fatty acids are required for keeping the colonic wall healthy. Sometimes when that's diverted, when the fecal stream is diverted and the colon doesn't have the gut nutrients reaching it, and the bacteria don't have the ability to break down normal food residue and, and produce these short chain fatty acids, inflammation can sometimes occur in the colon. The bacteria also produce vitamins like folic acid and vitamin K, and there's a robust interaction between our immune system at the gut level and between the bacteria, which actually tends to keep us healthy and keep our immune systems active. So therefore, how does then the small bowel stay relatively bacteria free? It's predominantly because of two reasons. Reason number one is that the stomach acid is actually bacteria killing. And when the stomach acid gets into the small bowel, it keeps the small bowel relatively sterile. The second aspect of it is that the small bowel by itself has a housekeeping movement so that the small bowel is milk free of debris and is kept somewhat sterile. There are several conditions that can predispose the small bowel to have more bacteria. These include both anatomic abnormalities or if there is decreased movement of the small bowel or if there's a communication between the small bowel with other organs and then some general uh, uh, medical conditions. Conditions in which there is pockets in the small bowel, what we call diverticulosis can cause the bacteria to grow. Sometimes in conditions like Crohn's disease or other things like scleroderma, etc., the movement of the colon is disturbed. Which as I, and as I mentioned, the housekeeping of the small bowel is disturbed, enabling these bacteria to multiply more profusely in the small bowel when they should not. Sometimes there can be communication that develops between the small bowel and the colon in conditions like Crohn's disease, or if there is small bowel surgery that the small bowel is actually shortened. All of these changes in the small bowel because either because of surgery or because of disease conditions or because of decreased movement cause the bacteria to grow. Uh, general conditions such as liver disease, celiac disease, pancreatitis, etc. and uh, renal disease also by a number of different mechanisms enable bacteria to multiply. One area of uh, uh, study is in irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, where there may be a component of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth that is causing a subsect or a smaller group of symptoms within the broad range of irritable bowel syndrome. How do we diagnose uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO? The best test can be aspiration and culture, but it's a very cumbersome thing to get into the bowel, suck out some fluid there and culture it, just like we do urine cultures, etc. The most go important go-to test that we use is called breath testing 
And the idea behind the breath testing is that we're giving you a substance like lactulose to drink. It goes into the small bowel and if there is bacteria and they start breaking it up, the lactulose then breaks into hydrogen and methane. Uh, and there are certain bacteria that actually can cause more methane and certain bacteria that by bre breakdown cause hydrogen which is then absorbed and you're blowing into a bag and what is then absorbed in the blood from the gut and blown out through the breathing uh, mechanism is measured uh, and this measurement you can see the graph just starts going up and that gives us a sense that there is some breakdown happening in the small bowel and that this is more bacterial overgrowth or excess bacteria there and that's when we treat it. The treatment aspect of it I'm, I'm going to kind of briefly mention but really it goes down to correlating your symptoms uh, that you have which could be bloating, gas, burping, uh, uh, sometimes loose bowel movements etc. But that's got to go through a trained clinical provider's eyes because Many GI illnesses can cause exactly the same complaints or same symptoms. How do we treat it? Essentially antibiotics. Antibiotics such as ciprofloxacin, norfloxacin, metronidazole, or neomycin, or several combinations of that sometimes. Many times symptoms improve. Occasionally they tend to recur and they require repeated treatment. So in summary, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is an interesting field. It's interesting to know that we have lots of bacteria that are actually doing a good job in warding and keeping a balance and perhaps supplying us some nutrients. It's only a problem when they start growing in areas that they're not normally present, but these can be diagnosed and treated. And this fits within the broad range of this bacteria and us and how we interface with each other. Thank you for your time. As always, feel free to call or email me with questions.